Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to do this crab on some bit of scrap fencing wood. You can see from that we've already transferred our image. Now the way I do it is literally to get your template, stick it on with a bit of painter's tape like so, and pop in some nice carbon paper underneath. Carbon paper, graphite paper, and if you draw around that, I use a pen, you can use a pencil. I've been known to go around with a screwdriver on the odd occasion. And it's just enough to transfer the image on, like so. That way we can use this template over and over again. Now the idea today is literally to route out most of this and then we'll get a scroll saw towards the end and literally just cut it out so we have the actual shape of the crab itself. Now you could leave it on the piece of wood if you wanted to and cut it down and do it that way but we're going to do a bit of scroll saw at the end but mostly a router project. Now to do it simply you could just put in a CNC bit which I'll show you in a minute and let you just route out all the black lines. Put your black paint on top, sand it down and then just paint your individual sections basically white for the eyes, black in the eyes white teeth and so on. Just to make it a little bit more interesting and make a little bit more effort, we're going to do it on three levels. When we say three levels, inside the mouth will be the deepest section. So that will be our deepest cut, number one we'll call it. Then we'll raise the route a bit up slightly and then we'll route out number two on the teeth. And then we'll raise it up again, do number three for the body and then we'll leave number four and number four alone. So the claws of the crab will stand out the eyes, same level of the eyes, then obviously it'll drop down to the body, drop down again to the teeth and then drop down inside the mouth. And then we'll literally just cut it out on the scroll saw and that way we'll have a slightly more 3D effect than it being just flushed to the wood. Now there's a couple of ways of getting, you can get your depth sorted. I previously made myself a little stepping gauge like this, we're going to call it. Marked it one to four, and that way you can set up your router to a depth of the number three, well, the one on this one, the deepest one, which will be down there, number three. When we've routed out that section, we can raise it up and just set it to that one. Do the teeth, and then we'll raise it up and set it to that one, and do the body. If you don't want to make one of those, you can actually purchase depth gauges for the router on eBay or Amazon. However, if you don't want one of those, it's just a simple case of marking the sides like so. Three levels, remember. So that top section will be the claws. We'll come down to the body, then the teeth, and then we'll obviously the back of the mouth like so. So you can just mark it off at the side. And then when you get your router, we'll set it there and just set the depth to our deepest one, which remember, will be number one, the mouth. As always for me, regards to the router, I like to use these little CNC bits. They do come in uh, different degrees, 20s, 30s, 15s and 10s. You get a pack of 10 like that. They're quite sharp. However, they do have a Dremel size shaft on them, a 3.175 millimeter. So you require what they call a, an adapter collet like so. And it's basically just a little tube and that slots in there. A 6.35 millimeter collet, by the way. The black at the end, silver to the front, slot that in. Now that will fit your router, a quarter inch router, no problem. So we'll use that to ground our lines inside here, for the deepest point, and inside the teeth itself. Once we've done that, we can raise it up to our next level, which will be there, obviously, and then we can do inside the mouth around the teeth and then we'll raise it up to the last section there the lowest point and it will go around these outer sections around the claws once we've done all our routing out bit oh just remembered we will also just remove the inner section of the eyes we can do that at the same level as the teeth just so it stands out once we've done all our router work with these little cnc bits we'll pop on one of the N milling bits, these come in a pack of 10, like so. There's not a lot to clear out, the body was the biggest piece, 
and something a bigger size like this well if you just set it to the same depth as the body one which would be that one there and just skim over that and the same we'll lower it down skim over the teeth lower it down again and probably move inside the mouth and the eye black section on the eyes okay if i just grab a packet quickly he says hopefully There's your CNC bits, the Queen packs of 10s like this. You can see for that one, they're 20s and 30s, so that's a mixed pack. So there's your CNC bits. Okay, we'll set this up in the router, this one here, the CNC bit. We'll set it to our deep, deepest depth, and we'll start routing this one out. Right, you can see from that, we've got our CNC bit inside the router. We'll use our little gauge. We're going to send it to the third depth, remember, which would be that one there. So one, two, three. So we set it on there. Simply case of just putting your gauge on there like so. And that's nicely at number three. So we'll literally just do the mouth, the inside of the mouth. And then we'll raise it up to number two, like so. Do the teeth. And then we raise it up to the final depth, the lowest point, And actually we do the body itself, just around these areas. Okay, we're doing them three levels first and then we'll come back when it's time to start removing the rest with the end millimeters <laughs> Right, you can see from that, we've actually took out that section with the CNC bit. The good thing about this fencing wood, even though it's cheap and nasty stuff, it does route out really easy. So we've actually removed all that section with the CNC bit. So we haven't put on the end milling bits yet. I probably will do exactly the same for the teeth now. So remember, that's our deepest level. There's a good depth to it inside there so that's basically finished now is the inside of the mouth the back of it should i say now we should do the teeth so remember we're back to our little gauge again and it's just a simple case of adjusting our cnc bit and we'll knock it up to the next level level number two and then we'll go over the teeth i'll actually do those with the cnc bit <laughs> Okay, we've marked off the teeth now. So literally we're going to leave it, the CNC bit, at the same depth. And we'll just skim over these. It will look like it's quite deep down inside the mouth. But remember, we've got to remove all this outer section as well. So that will bring the teeth slightly to the surface again. Okay, we'll just skim over the teeth now with the CNC bit set at the same depth. Right, you can see from that we've gone over the teeth just about. It's all rough and ready at the moment, but don't worry about that. We're going to sand it all down and just go in there with a Dremel, just a general tidy up. So now we've done the level one, the deepest one at the back. We've done the level two, which is the teeth. Now the final level three, or the lowest level, would be the body. So remember, we're back to our piece of wood again. Or you can use your marker on the side there. So we set it to the lowest point, which is number one for me on there, like so. And now we literally just go around all this section here. And hopefully those teeth won't look so far down inside the mouth. Okay, let's go around on our final depth now. <laughs> Right.
Right, you can see from that, we've gone around our final depth, gone around all the lines with the CNC bit, round the eyes. So that's the depth side of things done. All that's left now is to remove this body section. So we'll pop on one of our end milling bits, nice size. There is different bits out there. Just find one that you prefer. And I have these straight end, uh, sorry, these straight flush bits. They're far too aggressive for this. You catch it on something, it's going to take one of them claws off, no problem. So I'll stick with our little end milling bits for now. Pick a nice big one, biggest one there is. There's nothing too much detail on this one. And it's just a simple case of removing the CNC bit, remember what we used previously? Sliding your end milling bit in, up to that little barrier there, that coloured pink. Pop that in, pop that in the router. We'll set it to the last step we made, which is that one. Or remember, we can use our little device again to number one, the lowest point. We'll actually just go ahead now and remove all the body section. Right, you can see from that, we've gone all the way around the body. It's still rough and ready at the moment, but not, nothing to be too concerned about. It will sand down nice and smoothly. And the idea is to curve the edge of the claws, just give it a little bit more shape, same as the body itself. So you can see from that, we've got our deepest one there. We've come up slightly to the fish. There's just enough there to put a lip on. If you wanted a bit more, you could probably route those down a little bit shallower. Same again with the mouth. You've got a good thickness to play with if you want to do. But I'm happy enough with that. We can see the effect we've gone for. So now I'm just going to pop on a spiral blade into the scroll saw. Any straight blade will do for these. There is two inner cuts. If you just notice there, I pre-drilled a hole there just to cut out that little section. And there's also a section there to cut away as well. And then we'll literally just cut around it all with the spiral blade on the scroll saw. I do like these spiral blades. They cut in any direction. Remember, when you put them in, you want it smooth on the way down and rough on the way up. That way you know you've got your blade in. With these, you just basically just start off there and just go all the way around like that. Whereas if you use a standard blade, you would start there and you'd have to feed it and then just keep turning the wood, feeding it there and then back down to there, then there and then there. So find a blade that suits you i prefer the spiral blade you can get straight pinless and straight pin blade okay we'll pop this one in the scroll saw and literally just cut this one out and then we'll shape it uh, shape it down a bit with sandpaper and the dremel with some sanding burrs <laughs> Right, we've gone all the way around with those spiral blades. They cut out really easy on this fencing wood, no problem whatsoever. Those spirals, you either love them or hate them. So there's our general shape of our little crab today. 
We've got our different levels, as we said before, one, two, three, four. Now it's just a case of general tidy up, just round these edges off, maybe carve out some little pieces in there just to give a bit more shape so it's not as flat as it is at the moment, and then go around the eyes. For that, I like to use a Dremel and any old little bits I've got. I use these engraving bits, a couple of sanding drums. These are actually carving bits. They're quite savage. I wouldn't use that today on this one. So we'll just go with the old engraving bits. Any of these with these little heads on like so. And just pop one of those on. And just gently go around. And we'll go inside there. And shape that off like so. And then inside those jointed areas. Just give it a little bit of shape. And then we'll probably get a mouse sander. Or like I say. Use a little sanding drum and just round off those edges. Okay, let's gently tidy up and then we'll be on to painting. Right, that's enough sanding down for me. We can see our general shape from there. So we're just going to paint it now. I'm literally going to use painter's touch paints. Any acrylic paint will do. But I like these little painter's touch. They're ideal for outside projects. No problem whatsoever. So we'll throw a bit of orange on here, a bit of red, some nice white for the eyes, a bit of black for the centre, and obviously we'll get his teeth sorted. Okay, we'll start painting this one and then we'll come back when we're ready to put on a bit of clear protection. Right, that's our little project finished. You can see from that nice shine, giving two or three coats of the 151 yacht varnish. Just something else I'm trying. I'm quite happy with that. Gloss finish, nice and shiny. As you can see. Remember, these are just nice little simple projects. I tend to do these ones when I'm waiting on another project drying. Maybe if it's got resin in or I'm waiting on a part to actually finish something off. So nice, easy, easy little project. Anybody can make these. You're not going to win any Master Carbon Awards at the summer shows. But they're just fun little projects that take no doing whatsoever. Now for hanging purpose, on all my projects, I like to use these T-slot, basically keyhole slot maker router bits. That's a quarter of an inch by 5 sixteenths it says on there, I don't know if you can see that and you literally just pop that in your router set it to a nice depth and you can route out a nice slit in the back like so and that works fantastic for hanging up just get yourself your little screw in the in your wall, your fencing or whatever and you'll basically just slot that on there like so, so you've got no nails or screws showing and that works fantastic and the further you screw that into your wall, so later you just want the edge showing, that would be nice and tight on the back, and there's no chance of that moving anywhere. So that's the way I hang all my little projects on the shed. So there we have it, this little router nip of the crab, we're going to call him, is complete. He measures in at 9 inches by roughly 5.5 on rough fencing wood, remember. So give it a go, thank you very much for watching.